Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, a very special Wednesday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. My God, just waking up very early myself. So, of course, want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you a very happy morning, whether you're over there in good old, uh, what is it, Northern America, staying up for a late night crypto, crypto zombie night session, or you're waking up over here in Europe for some nice uh, coffee. Want to be wishing you well. And let's get on over to the live scene right here, right now, as Bitcoin actually having some action in the last couple of days, which has been quite uh, quite a lot of fun. Now, obviously, Bitcoin did close above um, all all the 10 simple, the yellow 21 exponential and the green 55 yesterday. So that is of great importance to me. And as long as Bitcoin's above the yellow 21 exponential, I don't want to be bearish. Now, overall, do I believe that the lows and no, I need to see a lot more than something like this. But when we're talking about, you know, time frames, when we're talking about trading, you need to separate it between the low time frames, the medium time frames, and the high time frames, which I refer to as like the micro, the the micro, the mini, and the macro <laughs> based off of fucking HDMI cables, uh, which was very enlightening when I when I went to buy one the other week. Anyways, um, in the micro time frames, uh, as long you know, as long as we're bu uh, above essentially 3,800, I do not want to be bearish. Uh, when Bitcoin had a reaction like this, basically faking out below the 21 exponential the day before, the day prior on um, what was that Sunday or sorry Monday, uh, that to me is a clear signal and something that I do not want to be going against. As you can see very easily in the low time frames right here, going on to a four hour. Whenever I see like a cupped out formation like this, that is typically. Uh, that is typically going to act as a little bit of a trap. Not only that, but putting on my drawing tools right here, this trend line, this trend line going all the way back from uh, late November, which had been governing Bitcoin's um, lower highs for throughout that whole segment, was broken about two weeks ago in late February, right? And we actually came back down and retested this area perfectly on Monday and bounced off of it. So to me, this is to be respected until, you know, from, uh, from a medium time frame perspective, that is to, that is to be respected as the uh, as a trend until until told otherwise. If we actually were to break back below this area, which is quite literally at thirty six fifty now, then we have something new to consider in the medium time frames. But for now, um, <clears throat> as we are healthily above that, so it's not really of great consideration. Now, of course, does that mean that I'm necessarily bullish right now at the same point either? It's there's a difference between not wanting to be bearish and then also being bullish. Now, I'm not necessarily bullish until we actually get back above uh, 3850. If we can close some four hour dildos above there, things start to turn around a little bit. And for all the people who were asking um, uh, last night, I am still in my options positions. I will be closing some soon. Uh, the you know, PL is starting to creep up more and more. So I like that. And overall, I think think that I've taken most out of this trade that I'm going to get as we're pretty much right in between these strikes right now, which that's about the best profit uh, profit point for me. Um, so again, you know, if, if you have been following along with the new option series, which I've been uploading new videos to that every, each and every night, and you understand what's going on there, well, that's essentially my plan. And I'll actually, by the way, on the last video for that series, I'll, I'm actually going to upload a video from the options program so that you guys can see one, you know, how the program is actually run and two, how you, how you can see like a much more detailed look inside because as of the current moment in time, that, that series has been all very, 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 very basic stuff. Um, very important stuff. I mean, you have to get the fucking base before you can move on, but we're going to actually get into some legitimate strategies. Um, so again, looking at, uh, looking at the medium time frames right here, um, to kind of wrap up what I'm saying, I don't necessarily want to be bullish as long as we're below 38.50. If we do get above 38.50, I would be looking for for a run into this blue box territory, which Bitcoin has rejected from once, twice, and uh, and I'd imagine that if we did make another run for it, it probably would break, and we probably would be looking at 39.50. Um, 39.50 of great importance from the from a little bit of a higher time frame perspective. This is your daily right here. As long as we are below 38.50, this uh, this cyan 89 is still governing price action. And that has been the that was the, that kind of got the fake out to the upside beforehand. But my point is, is that if Bitcoin were to get back above this area, if Bitcoin were to even close, you know, like a, a two hour or four hour dildo back above thirty nine fifty, I would immediately get bullish to seeing Bitcoin get back around the prior high at forty two hundred and probably beyond at that point, probably beyond. Um, of course, like I said though. Just because some of the lower time frames can switch around, does that mean that I'm, you know, I, I believe that the low for Bitcoin is in? I do not. Um, of course, there will be some. There, uh, uh, there, there certainly will be some descent, and there actually will be a bullish case forming if Bitcoin does get back above uh, forty one hundred, because then this is going to start to look like an Adam and Steve bottom, which. 
does have the right makings as of right now. And that was really critical what we saw yesterday because if Bitcoin actually closed the day below 3,700, once again, that would destroy the case from an, for, an, for an Adam and Steve. But for now, it is actually still technically in play. It, it could it could form. But of course, just as with any sort of formation, um, and I really don't like trading patterns. I, I, I don't think that... Tr I, I, I see very rarely successful pattern traders, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, but more so than fractal traders, I will say that. But uh, but hey, if Bitcoin can get back above this area, that would actually be a completion of pattern. And of course, when you're trading patterns, you need to see like actual full on confirmation first things first before uh, getting involved. If uh, you know, otherwise you're gonna be saying that everything's a fucking inverted head and shoulders because well, you have a left shoulder right here, and then just don't worry about my Elliott waves are gonna tell me that uh, the head's coming in down around here, and then we're gonna put in the right shoulder, and then boom, all the way to six thousand. Easy as that, guys. That's how easy trading is, of course. Um. You know, when looking at something like this, uh, I would, I do want to stay agnostic in this range. I don't want to force my opinion on the lower time frames. They are saying to be, uh, they're actually saying to be cautiously, cautiously short-term bullish right here. Um, but again, I don't, you know, I, I'm comfortable playing options in a scenario like this uh, to the upside, but I'm not comfortable playing spot um, to the upside. I don't want to play spot to the upside really until Bitcoin confirms to me that it's actually formed an uptrend um, as of the current moment in time. We're actually still just getting stoned while we're right at this 3850-ish marker. So let me just make sure that I'm actually recording. Okay, good. <laughs> don't have to go through another crisis once again. Um, but uh, but overall, this 3850, this 30, 30, 3950-ish area are going to be really, 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 really important. If 3850 breaks the upside, I mean that, um, you know, I'd 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 feel pretty comfortable saying that we're probably going to see we're probably going to see 3950 break if that were to happen. But hey, you know, first things first, one thing at a time. We do have our medium time frame also is getting, you know, uh, heading up healthily up. We got th uh, four hours straight up. We got three hours straight up. We got two hour actually coming down a little bit. But what about the uh, the medium time frames? Uh, six hour uh, right in the neutral zone headed up as well. What about the eight hour fresh cross up, 10 hour fresh cross up, 12 hour well, never really. Yeah, I mean, kind of, uh, but still going. Um, so overall, you know, all those medium time frames are turning up and you got to be looking at the daily now, which is losing momentum right here. So there's going to be a lot of implications if Bitcoin does take out 3850. I'm going to imagine that you're going to start to see all of those switch around. And this is going to start to really present a different look on the overall picture as I, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> um, this is going to start to uh, present a really different look on the overall picture because one of the things that I've been going off of was looking at uh, the daily right here and looking at all these different indicators, especially the, especially our Stokes, which each and every time that has crossed down in this more critical zone, it has been a dump in the last year, uh, in the last year's worth of price action. It has led on to major dumps down to the bottom side of that range. Uh, when Bitcoin was above 6,000, you know, it, it would lead, you know, basically it was, it was this dump from 12,000 to 6,000 right over here, this dump from 10,000 to 6,000 right over here, this dump from 8,400 to 6,000 right over here, and this dump from 7,400 to 6,000 right over here. But once again, we got into this range and we did turn down from there, but Bitcoin did not going back to the low of the range. So if it were to turn, if we were to actually get a full on cross up before returning back to the downside of the range, when I say that, I mean like, you know, 34, 3,500, um, that is, we have something new to consider uh, as, as far as that goes. Same thing with the exponentials right here. We got a bullish cross actually, uh, the yellow to the upside of the green, which is typically a good sign. Um, but for the past year, each and every time that Bitcoin's gotten it, it is actually called the very last gasp for air of a bull, you know, of, of a failed bull rally. And when you when we go back in time, you know, we can just quickly go over this, you know, again, right over here, getting that cross and then boom, right as we break the 21 exponential, it is a straight move down to the low side of the range. Same thing right over here, getting the cross right here, has another rally and then breaks the 21 straight down to the bottom side of the range. Same thing right over here, gets gets across, has has like a last rally, breaks the 20 and then straight down to the bottom side of the range. Well, Bitcoin actually did get the cross and we did break the 21 to the downside, but the next day faking out to the upside, that is something new. That is something new. And like I said, as a trader, more so, more so as a trader than an analyst, because I don't really consider myself an analyst, I consider myself a trader first and foremost, have to be fluid with the overall price action if you are going to trade these lower time frames. So again, when we have something like this, that is new. That is new. That has not been the trend for the last year. So again, um, I would not. Be, I mean, could Bitcoin take off from here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ab ab absolutely can. 
Uh, but again, as far as actual low being in, that sort of shit, that's the kind of conversation that I want to back away from. And more importantly, this 3850, uh, this 3850 resistance is not going to go down lightly, I'd imagine, as, yes, you know, we do have this horizontal right here, which probably does match up with one of the fibs. But more importantly, let's go, yeah, it matches up with the 236. Um, but more importantly, let's go over to the monthly. And the monthly is going to show us that the 50... The 50 exponential moving average is coming in right here, right around 3880, which is what's actually the high of the rally yesterday. Um, so again, to me, as long as we are below the 50 exponential on the monthly, I am not considering that the low, that the overall low is in for Bitcoin. It is not in, it's not in the works as far as I'm concerned. And that is, again, that resistance coming in around 3880. We could just kind of round up to 3900 which would be good enough. This has been governing our highs for the last three months. And I do believe that this is the right way to be looking at it after back testing it for quite some time. And overall, as this price signature looks very much like consolidation on a time frame like this, I mean, look at look at the falling volume, look at the overall structure of this guy, perhaps even better seen on a three digital time frame, which as we can see over here, you know, you have that very nice orderly drop off in volume. We have that very nice constructive price action uh, signature being made. And, uh, and overall, as all of these moving averages start to get, you know, start to get lower periods below the higher periods, not fucking good. I do think to myself that, you know, this, if this is going to be consolidation, then as these two moving averages approach each other, this red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential, that is likely, <laughs> that is likely to cross to the downside. And that would be a very, 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 very powerful cross, likely signaling some intensified bots, uh, algo selling um, action, which would be the impetus for letting this consolidation break to the downside. But of course, this is a monthly dildo time frame, so it's going to take a long time. And that's bringing me to my next point is that when we are talking about major mark cycles being resolved, it is going to take a lot of time. And to put in perspective, the last time that we actually played out a mark cycle was right over here in 2014, 2015. And even when Bitcoin did find its lows, it went sideways for about a year straight or almost a year from January of 2015 to October of that year. Once it regained the 21 exponential on the monthly, it was straight up uh, bull market on. And that's also, you know, that would be one of the macro triggers that I'm looking for. As long as Bitcoin's below the monthly 21, I'm not considering that the, uh, I, you know, from a more traditional standpoint, I would not be saying that the low is in. If Bitcoin regains the 21, which is currently all the way at 5,200, then I would change my mind immediately. There's a couple other triggers as well, which we'll get to. But um, but overall, you know, even if Bitcoin did put in the low right here, it's likely to go sideways for quite some time. As remember, market cycles are going to are very likely going to take longer and longer. What's up, Paul? Paul uh, Paul P. Stan Stancio. Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, but uh, again, so I wouldn't be in any, in any sort of rush to begin into long positions. I want to see Bitcoin actually gain some upwards momentum, uh, like again, getting back above the yellow 21 exponential on the monthly. That would be a big, 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 big deal. Right now, as I see these two moving averages approach each other, that is not good. That is not. That is really not what you want to see um, as Bitcoin still struggles to get back above and regain that 50 exponential. So that is going to be the big focus for me, um, likely going forwards here. I'd imagine that as long as we are essentially below below the high of the prior monthly dildo, that is a big deal. That is a big deal because that's telling us that that is where the, that, uh, that is where the selling pressure is emerging from. Anyways, um, okay, so let's go back onto the weekly. Uh, while we're on the weekly, while, while we're on the higher time frames, yes, we have caught wind of the red ten symbol moon average. That does look okay right now, but a lot of a lot of days left in the weekly. Uh, we do have the weekly Stokes headed up, so fair enough. That is good, and technically, we actually did break this trend line right here. Oh, I guess it's already in there. Um, so fair enough, you know, that's that uh, that is a change of behavior going all the way back from May of last year, almost one year's worth of price action. Um, but more importantly, as far as I'm concerned on this guy, as long as we are both opening and closing dildos below the purple 200 exponential, or perhaps better said, as long as we have not both opened and closed a weekly dildo above this 200 exponential at 4100, I would not be even having the initial correspondence of thinking that the ultimate low is in for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin actually both open and close a weekly dildo above that purple 200 exponential, that would be a big deal. I'd change my tune probably, but at the same point in time, the higher levels that we looked at with the monthly 21 and also just getting back above the 6,000 level that Bitcoin spent so much time going sideways upon, those are going to hold more precedence from a more traditional standpoint. I, as a trader, would probably take some trades if, if, if the 200 exponential on the weekly were to be taken out, however. Um, 
but again, from a more traditional standpoint, you know, you got to wait for the, or the other ones would be much more, much more important as far as this goes. Uh, you do see that the 21 exponential is getting ever so close to that 200 exponential, which is um, not the best look either. But hey, you know, it's it's one of those things. We're gonna, we're probably going to wait a lot of time here. Uh, more importantly, all the all all eyes should be on Mrs. Litecoin right now. She's the one who's been running the market and the one that's closest to bucking the trend. Um, but anyways, back onto Bitcoin. Let's go check out CMEs. How do they look right now? Did we actually get back above that critical area? We did. We closed above the twenty one. and We closed above the fifty as well. So very important right here. And and fucking around right at this level once again. So this was the trend line going all the way back, governing the lower highs from from late November. Bitcoin got above it, um, what was it, oh, like a couple weeks ago, uh, late February, but very, 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 very low volume hang above and, 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 and really it was a trap. Now, here's the thing. If Bitcoin pops back up and regains and, and regains this area, regains all of these resistances back above about 3,900, that is now a change. That is once again, a, that uh, uh, that would be a change. That, that would basically be a negation of this whole thing and something that does actually look kind of likely to happen. Uh, we do have our daily stokes hinting at a lost momentum right now. We do have our daily RSI doing what over here? Um, not really telling us anything about price action, actually. And we are above the 10 simple, the daily 21, and the green 50. So I would I would be giving this special consideration as well. Let's go down to a four hour. Yeah, right now it looks like it's just trying to flag out right here. So we're probably going to give it another try at this resistance. That next try is going to be absolutely critical to see if it gets rejected or not. As long as we are below this area, though, that is the area of of, of interest in the more immediate time frames. And if I were trading spot right now, that's what I'd be taking trades off of. But like I said, I don't necessarily want to be bearish right here. I'd want to be bearish if we broke back down below about 3,800 or, or 3,880 more accurately speaking. If we did that, that'd be a lot more, a lot more comforting. But, but right now, not so much, as this does have a little bit of juice in it. Now, I'm looking at the four-hour Stokes; they are getting pretty high. What about the eight-hour? What are the eight-hour doing? Uh, eight-hour just fresh cross up, rejecting, rejecting, going into the bear control zone. By the way, and what about the hourly? Yeah, hour, hourly is going to be. Ali is probably going to tick up too if we if we hang this uh, guy here or a little bit higher. So again, this is this is a pretty critical moment with what we're coming up on in the very low time frames. Does this thirty eight fifty level get regained or not? Because that's going to really run and have carryover into the higher time frames, which then we can start. You know, if if thirty eight fifty gets taken out, then I mean at that point in time, I'm I'm, I'm going to be looking at thirty thirty nine fifty and you know basically the prior high at forty two hundred. So that's that that's a tradable event. That's an actual you know that that's that's worth trading i'd say um anyways uh let's go look at the, the longs and shorts longs at thirty two and a half thousand. sorry twenty three and a half thousand. oh my god i've quite literally am dyslexic and now this presents a great a great um this presents a great dilemma because we're seeing i i believe that we might be in the initial stages of seeing something new go on why do i say that the shorts have been in the critical zone where major major dumps have emerged from over the past year, each and every time, they've been in there for about two weeks now, which is a significant amount of time. It's not unheard of. It has happened in the past, but each and every dump from last year, all of the failed bull rallies did emerge from this level on the total shorts on Finex, which again, you know, this was your February dump from 12,000, 6,000. This was your May dump from 10,000, 6,000. This was your, this was your uh, August dump from 80, uh, what was it? 8,400 to 6,000. Sorry, 7,400 to 6,000. No, 8,400 to 6,000. This was your dump from 10,000, 6,000 in May. This was your breakage of Six thousand, and once again, we're in this level. But we haven't seen we haven't seen that same signature that we see from those dumps. Because when those dumps happen, they don't they don't give you any time. They don't give you a second chance to sell a good level. And right now, if I were interpreting these charts, I would say you're technically getting a phenomenal chance to resell, which is not how generous mar markets are. Not that generous. Uh, the longs, however. Are in 23, 23 and a half thousand open longs, which, if funnily enough, each and every time that the longs have gotten down in this range at this level, this is where big pumps have actually emerged from. So now we're seeing two different things going on. Which do are we seeing changes of behavior? Perhaps because we're not seeing the the former trend take over. We're not seeing that as of right now. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So we talked about that. Let's go look at GBDC. Where do you close the day? GBDC closing the day. Um, 
Doji-ish dildo, not really telling us too much. Above above all these uh, all these moving averages right here. What about the lower time frames? Um, lower time frames not that impressive actually. Uh, four hour Stokes did just cross the upside. What about daily? Daily Stokes still headed down. What about uh, some some very low looking hourly? Hourly is getting up there as well. Um, so yeah, we can see that there's very obvious resistance right here, uh, right at this uh, four dollar sixty two cent region. Um, so again, that's going to coincide with the 3850 ish area on spot charts. So again, which one, you know, which one happens first? This one has been pretty insightful for the past year. It typically does make the move first. Um, we do have a nice gap to the downside now. So, and we filled the gap to the upside yesterday. So, I mean, you know, actually on this guy, I wouldn't be surprised if we did come back down. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's one of those things we're gonna have to wait until this actually opens up trades OTC. So we won't know until the live stream later tonight. Um, okay. So we looked at CMEs, looked at Bitcoin. Uh, do we want to go look? Okay, Mr. Buterall. No, let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. Yeah, Mrs. Litecoin right over here. Uh, closing the day up, of course. I mean, massive up back above the daily 200 exponential moving average. But I do want to show this as well. Mrs. Litecoin is an ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearish, a bearish reversal pattern. And the thing with this is, though, is that it can get all the way up to about $56, all the way up here to the to, to the to the upper resistance, and still reject from there, and still maintain its overall formation. Now, here's the thing, though. I have been doing some some research on Litecoin uh, during the morning hours. I want to bring up um, my Finex chart, actually. And there is something interesting because a couple of people called this out. I want to give credit to them, but I don't. Uh, I don't remember who exactly it was. But uh, but Litecoin actually did lead itself out of the bear market first in 2015, 20 and 2014, 2015 before Bitcoin. As it it turned the corner, I would say right here confirmed in June, basically basically uh, July of 2015. Well, Bitcoin turned the corner in I believe it was October of 2015. Let's go confirm that. Uh, and, I, and when I say turn the corner, I mean like actually confirm back above uh, back above critical areas. Yeah, but uh, around actually October essentially. But again, going back to Mrs. Litecoin, you do see some similarities between the past market cycle and this one. And what do I mean by that is basically you can see that Mrs. Litecoin really ground down this area, making some sort of a descending triangle right around here. And once she broke back out of it, I should actually save this onto my uh, onto my list. Um, once she broke back out of it right over here, that was the beginning of your bull market. Although, I mean, bull market for Mrs. Litecoin is going sideways for like literally <laughs> two years. I mean, that's that's what this was right here. It's just making an ascending, or do you want to call this a symmetrical triangle, ascending triangle, whatever the fuck you want to call it, something like this. Um, and then eventually breaking out to the upside. But again, you know, looking at this right here, if we're looking at uh, the consolidation before the initial do before before the inevitable dooms drop right here, I mean, that's a very similar to what we're seeing right over here um, in the past market cycle. And of course, I don't want to make this sound like this is a fractal. The reason why this is significant is because because Mrs. Likwin was consulting this area for about three months, going all the way from uh, August to December. Sorry, not three months, four months um, in that 2014 segment. Well, going over here, we have the same sort of thing. We have this this consolidation from August to you know November, essentially a little bit shorter actually. But if and when Mrs. Likwin gets back above that broken support, which she is flirting around with right now, that it that would be a signal in my opinion. That would be enough for me, actually. Uh, that would be that would be akin to Bitcoin getting back above six thousand. That's that's like the, that's the price structure again, not a fractal, but price structure. And that would be this level right here. You see it. You see a full on close above, and then good, good to go. After that, you know, I, I believe that the lows are in. So Mrs. Litecoin is going to have a chance. She just needs to close the weekly above fifty two dollars, basically above the weekly two hundred exponential. Which, by the way, Mrs. Litecoin is right there. She has gained the two hundred simple right here. And now, get, and now fucking around with the 200 exponential. So looking at something like this, um, do I think that Mrs. Litecoin can turn around the mark cycle before the other majors do? And the past has shown that to be true, that that can happen. More importantly, though, I'd be looking still at this 200 exponential moving average right here. And if Mrs. Litecoin can both open and close a weekly dildo above it, which is, again, $53 on Finex, that would be good enough for me. So... If that were to happen, I would no longer believe that 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 Mrs. Lequin is in a bearish market. She has had she she is the best argument for the bear market being over. Um, but still, in the lower time frames, I do want to get this out. It's not you know it's it's certainly not one sided. We still do have uh, her in some sort of a rising channel, rising what I think I think more of a rising wedge on uh, on some like Finex, but something like this. 
And then, of course, in the more recent price action, we have uh, basically an ascending broadening wedge being formed as well, which is typically a bearish reversal pattern. Um, so I would say it's not it's certainly not all cut and dry, not not certainly not done just yet. But as long as she's below about fifty six dollars on a daily or the weekly uh, fifty three dollars level that we just looked at, it is still a massive question mark. And I would say it's, you know, don't want to celebrate too soon as uh, if you are a longer term investor. I mean, you know, there's there, there's no harm in waiting for a few more dollars if you really are a long term believer in, the, in something like this. Um, my long term believer in Mrs. Litecoin. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But I, but what I would say is. Uh, um, is hey, you know, understand what those where those major macro market triggers uh, are, especially in relation to Bitcoin, because we have seen in the past that Mrs. Litecoin can go ahead first. Yes, there is the happening and all that good shit, um, which fair enough. I mean, I don't really have anything else to say about that. You have the happening and you do have that trend where, you know, typically when they have, you know, about a year before the happening, that's, uh, that's when the bull market starts, um, historically speaking. Anyways, um, let's see, what do we have? Uh, where, oh uh, yeah, let's go over, let's go over on Mr. Uh, Mr. Buterall over here. What's he doing? Um, Basically, same thing as Bitcoin. Very little difference between the two. A lot more droopy than Mr. Bitcoin. Um, but again, you know, Mr. Buterall's level, the critical level for him, would be right here, essentially, uh, right around 143 and a half. As long as you're below 143 and a half, it is still a question. I mean, I would still be, I would not be bullish, but I'd also not be bearish as long as you're above 135 and a quarter. So in this range right here, it would just quite literally be completely neutral. I think that there are perhaps a few more things saying upside than downside, but um, more importantly, I would only be taking uh, trades off supporting resistance. And again, like I said, all I'm doing right now is playing options. I have no interest. I have no intent to play spot when we're in a completely neutral zone like this. I play options. And this is a very small position. Um, I actually got rid of about 10 of my short calls because I did want to have a little bit of upside exposure. But uh, but again, you know, I'll actually probably get, end up getting rid of this. I think that this is probably the P&L that I'm looking for on, on a trade like that. Um, so... If we were to break down below this level, 135 and a quarter, which would also be like what on Bitcoin, about 3780 maybe, then yes, then I'll be bearish once again, looking for looking for a test back down to about 3650, 3500. Um, if we break back above, if we break above 140, what what is this, 143 and a half, or it, or basically 3850 on Bitcoin, then I'd be looking for a run to about 152 or or 3950, uh, and then that's where the next test is going to come. I'd imagine at that point in time, you will find resistance there on first pass, but a reaccumulation than a try at the former high would probably be in the works if that were to happen. So again, uh, very, 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 very critical day upon us as, uh, as I'm sure that we're going to probably see this resolved pretty damn soon. Um, so yeah, let's go check out a uh, traditional market spies over here. Uh, again, carrying on a little bit more with that rejection that we saw a couple days ago, right above the 281 resistance. Um, I do think that this one has a little bit further down to go. We have lost a 10 simple moon average for the first time in, since January, um, so it's been it's been quite literally two months. This is the first time that we've actually closed a uh, a full dildo below it. Sorry, I've closed a dildo below it. Um, lower time frames do look like they want to come down a little bit further. I mean, yes, it is putting in a lot of time right here, but uh, two seventy five would be your next level of support. Um, of course. Uh, of course, 279 and a half is your resistance. As long as we're below there, I would be looking for this to have a pullback at the very least to about 275 ish area. Um, at that point in time, we're going to, we actually have a couple very big competing things going on. We have the daily dollar golden cross going on. So I don't like being short coming into that. Yes, I do think that, you know, it's likely that you get a little bit of a pullback, but overall, um, Daily Dolo Golden Cross is very fucking powerful and something that I would not be going against. Uh, I would only I would only be like bearish on this guy if we actually broke back down below the 200 exponential, which is 272-ish area. Uh, and we have the 200 simple even higher at 275. So again, a lot of things going to be coming in this, into this area right here. So understand the perspective of this. You know, daily stokes are coming down. They have lost their formation here. They were trying to be in some sort of a triangular consolidation. Now coming back down at daily R side, you know, uh, three, uh, three, three, three stabs of bearish divergence and down. So I do think that this has some more, you know, some more juice to the downside, uh, but only if 275 breaks would I become, you know, more, more excitedly bearish. And even then, it's if 275 breaks, I'd be looking towards 272. If 272 breaks, then things start to get interesting from a more higher time frame perspective, as the weekly would come into play, and uh, the weekly picture starts to get turned around around 264. 
So again, um, yeah, weekly doesn't look too healthy right here, though. I will say that weekly, weekly does want to come down. Um, okay, cool. So we talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, let's go do the daily rounds of the shit cones. Um, actually, I want to see what the crypto fear and greed index is doing right now. Yeah, we're taking that to 42. People did not get too excited about yesterday. What's going on, man? Come on, guys. We had a we had a hundred dollar rally. You're supposed to get super fucking bullish. Um, again, the trend for the last year has been each and every time that uh, crypto fear and greed index gets above, you know, about a fifty, it has lined up with a major dump. But again, we're seeing something perhaps in the in the makings of of it being different with essentially this point getting all the way up to a 69, which was the second highest we've seen in the past year. People getting uh, more optimistic than any other time except for last February. Uh, but again, we're kind of putting in, you know, we're kind of going sideways right here. Uh, usually when you see these massive bull traps go down, it's typically a straight shot down. It doesn't, it doesn't give you the second chance to reshort, um, which is what, again, that is what we're doing right now. So I, 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 I can't help but be skeptical of something like that. Um, so yeah, all right, back on to, uh, okay, we looked at the crypto fear and greed index. We looked at uh, longs and shorts as well. Yeah, longs and shorts is, is, is we def, there's definitely something to consider there. Um, we're not getting the, we're not getting the same reaction that we've gotten in the past. Alrighty. Um, okay, cool. So we looked at traditional marks. We looked at that. Yeah, let's go look at the regular shitcoin. Zcash, what is he doing? And again, the 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 relevancy of looking at the shitcoins, or sorry, the highly esteemed third generation blockchain coins that are going to change the world. It's just people need to, you know, they need to stop getting fucking manipulated first. Uh, is uh, the the relevancy of checking out something like this is that I want to see the the general market moving together. And Zcash is not. Zcash looks very bearish right here. Zcash looks very bad. Did not join in yesterday's rally. Did not participate below all major moving averages in the overall in the overall circumstance of a descending triangle. Um, yes, you know I've seen every fucking pattern break out every goddamn which way, but that is certainly more likely to break out to the downside. Bcash, same thing. Um, not below all major moving averages, but below most major moving averages, and in the in the context of a descending triangle. Tron Cash getting rejected right at our resistance right here. Now this one has a little bit of a different chart than most other things. Um, we spoke about how it was, how after it was after it was likely to bounce off the 2.1 cent region, it was going to come back and retest this area. It has. If as long as it's below two uh, 2.45 cents. Um, I would be looking for I would be looking for some more downside actually, but the second that it gets back above 2.5 cents, I'd be looking for a run all the way to uh, all, all the way higher up into this area. Uh, Neo Cash, uh, Neo Cash, mm, not really bucking anything either. Needs to get back above nine dollars and uh, 35 cents for it to do some different. Still not convinced on something like this. Uh, RSI getting rejected right at the exponential, not a good sign. Uh, EOS Cash, what's he doing? Uh, hit the uh, almost hit the 200 simple moving average yesterday, but uh, still kind of putting in some time right here. Uh, definitely the closest to being a Mrs. Litecoin, but still overall rising channel. A mm, lot of questions mark here. Lot. Uh, I don't think I'm again. I don't think it's going to do anything significantly different than the general market. Uh, Ripple Cash again, still in the context of a descending triangle. Uh, as long as it's below three uh, 32 cents, not not too impressive. If it does, t if it does overtake 32 cents, it's not necessarily bear market over anything just yet. It's 34 and a half cents area that I'd be looking for for that. And uh, sorry, I shouldn't declare that the bear market's going to be over if, if Ripple, if Ripple's nipples gets above 34 and a half cent. But I would be looking for an ex a much more extended rally if we were to take out that level to, to about 40 cents. Uh, so that'd be a tradable event. Uh, Daily Stokes for Mrs. Ripple's nipples actually did cross the upside. So fair enough. Been very snaky though recently. Uh, Monero Cash. What's Monero Cash doing? Um... Monero Cash actually looks okay. Uh, just consoling this region right here. Uh, very obvious resistance coming in right around fifty-four and a half dollars. <sighs> kind of looks like it wants to take a stab towards that area as well. Let's go down to a four-hour. See what the four-hour saying. Come on, what are you doing, man? There we go. Um, eh, four hours. Four hours got the same resistance that we see on all the other major majors. Basically, right here at fifty and a half bucks. So again, as long as you're below fifty and a half dollars, I mean. Just playing around with the other ones. Bitcoin is basically Bitcoin at thirty-eight fifty. If you get back above this area, then yeah, I'd be looking for a retest of uh, fifty-four and a half dollars. But as long as we're below this, I mean, pressure is above. Uh, we do have our we do have our stokes getting pretty high. We do have our RSI also in a bearish posture as well. Uh, Stellar Cash, what's he doing? Eight and a half cents. Um, bad. Yeah, Stel Stellar. Actually, no, it did, it did regain the 21 yesterday. Uh, overall, though, still in something like this, still in something like a, an ascending broadening wedge is what it looks like. Again, a bearish distribution pattern. As long as it's below 9.2 cents, not good. 
Um, if it can break back above, sorry, nine and a half cents. If it can break back above nine and a half cents, then we got some new to consider. But for right now, uh, something like this actually, you're actually creating a descending broadening wedge, or sorry, a, a descending channel or a falling channel, descending channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it, with an ascending broadening wedge within here. So as long as you're within the context of the of the falling channel, that is typically a bullish pattern. But it's not bullish until you actually break out to the to the upside, which again would be right around nine and a half cent. So yeah, I think that covers it up for that. Um, let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin really quick. Wrap this bitch up as I'm pretty fucking hungry. And let's go down to the four hour. Again, resistance right here at 38.50. As long as we're below there, I would be neutral. I don't have a strong opinion on, on the very low time frames Between 38.50 and 37, 37.80, I don't think that there is a real opinion to be had, at least from my side. As a trader, no, I don't. I don't have a strong opinion. Like I said, I'll only be playing options, which is the beauty of of options again if you want to get involved in options the beauty of options is that i can do them when i'm not uh, i'm not really sold on a direction you know and that's the beauty of them um but when i'm looking at spot right over here uh, you know if, if bitcoin breaks above 3850 i don't necessarily get full on bullish but i would be looking for a move to 39 3950 above 3950 i do get I, I do get a little bit more bullish um and below 3780 i would get immediately bearish um, if Bitcoin violates 3780 to the downside, I would be looking for another move down, uh, you know, uh, 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 eventually to 3650. And I would imagine that probably does break on the next pass. You don't want to test this guy more than you already have. Um, and if you do break 3650, then this would be a, a full on breakout failure. And I'd be looking for a move down to the low side of the range around 3500, you know, probably below as well. But overall, you know, again, understand where the where the actual macro perspectives are, understand what actually changes the picture, understand the lower time frames in relation to the higher time frames and how that can kind of switch around. But also remember that this 3850 area is of great importance because that's also going to be around the monthly 50, which again, anything that happens intra-month is just that. It only it only matters where it closes. But um, I would imagine that if, you know, if the bears do want to retain control, they will defend it. I don't think that Bitcoin goes back above the 50 exponential on the monthly if the bears want to retain control. So I, I would feel pretty comfortable with saying that. Anyways, um, that's gonna do it for this morning's uh, video. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Gonna go get gonna go get some food, which I'm really excited about. I haven't gotten food in a long time. And uh, yeah, take care. Good speaking with you. It's a pleasure as always. And take care. Oh, by the way, sorry before I forget. Uh, check out my interview with FUD TV um, over there over there with Elliot. Uh, great guy and just great channel in general. If you if you haven't checked out FUD TV, one of the few channels that does fundamentals right. He is very, 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 very good at breaking down these more complex fundamental concepts and then relating them to the viewer. And then also just he seems to make an actual effort to presenting good information, not just not just full on moon boy information, not just full on doom boy information, but logical fact based type things, which is greatly refreshing in this space. So definitely check out FUD TV. I'll be back on later. Like I said, um, looking forward to seeing you there. If not, well, I want to wish you well on this happy, uh, happy little Thursday. No, Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday, happy Wednesday and uh, take care.